We're on record, recording now. We're, li we're live now. Okay. Yes, in the, w in the world but not of the world. That is actually one of Hawkins' uh, audio programs. Um, and, or, or you could say, you know, to wear the world like a, a loose garment as well. Um, that, I mean, to be in the world and, and not of the world, that is the observer, you see. So uh, the, the observer or the enlightened state is that um, it's in the world but it's not of the world. Then what, what is the world? The wor I mean, Course in Miracles gives a nice explanation. I mean, I, uh, well, it's my interpretation of Course in Miracles. To, be, to, to experience the world as most people experience it, you experience fear and separation. So you experience, uh, you experience uh, or you could say separation anxiety. You experience yourself as being a limited entity uh, in, in, in the world. How, how do you exp so to be, to be in the world, I, would, I mean, I'd paraphrase it, to be in the world means you're identified with your thinking and your body, and you're identified with, with the feelings as being personal, as being there's a, sep a separate me is real. So when you start to identify with, um, with, your, with the thoughts that pass in consciousness, when you start to identify with the body, when you start to identify with time, uh, when you start to identify with feelings as being personal, then a sense of, uh, a, the experience of separation immediately uh, exists. So it's now my experience, if I identify with my thoughts and my body in this, and my location and start to identify with time, then I, and then I project that outwards. I start to experience, I'm this body and this thinking in this corner of the room. And therefore I project that I, I'm a body with thinking and there's other bodies with thinking. So that's the thing of like, if I experience myself experientially as a cloud, then I'll be in this room as one cloud amongst many other clouds. But if I, uh, so, so to, be, to be in the world but not of the world, if I become, you know, so this body and this thinking, if there's observing of this body and this thinking, then this, this body and this thinking is not me. So that which is witnessing this body and this thinking, uh, the witnesser is in the world, shall we say. I mean, these are, these are using language in an odd way. The witnesser is in the world, but there is no, there is no separation in the world. So this, this room is being witnessed, but there is no separation. There is no me and you in this room, in the, in the, in the room. So there is, there is in the world, but the usual, what the Course would call the collective illusion of separation, you're not in the collective illusion of separation. That is the that is the collective um, that is the collect. What shall we say? The collective illusion of, of the world. So where everyone believes they are separate bodies and separate thoughts, talking to other separate bodies and separate thoughts. You know, we I unconsciously agree. I am a body and my thoughts, and I'm talking to you as your body and your thoughts. So you So then I would say that's normally being. Uh, that's being in the world as most humans are in the world. But if you're, if you're not identified with your body and your story, then there is the oneness. The Course in Miracles says the oneness or the enlightened state. So there is no separation being exists. So either there is the experience in this moment of, uh, of oneness or witnessing, or there is experience of separation. I am my body thinking. I'm a personal separate identity perceiving other personal separate identities in the room. So that's in the world, and, and uh, so one is in the world, but one is not in the collective illusion of the world. And I think there was something else in that question. Um, does, that, does that answer that question? Um, yeah, and it was all almost like holding on to things too tight. Too. Oh, yes. So, so, my, so my understanding was that that I'm, you know, I'm holding on, on to things too tight. So that's one way what you've just explained of looking at, and it's like being in the world, but not of it. I'm, I, I'm, I'm of it. I'm of every job. I'm of every situation, of every encounter, of every relationship. And it's almost like wearing things in the world, this earthly world, in this earthly body I've been given. Like Dr. Hawkins says, you've been given this earthly body for a limited period of time. Enjoy it. Um, so if you if you if you if you have it, to enjoy it. So it's almost like it, can't we do the same with relationships, with decisions, with everything, and not holding on to too tight of things. Well, the thing with Hawkins is, you know, he talks to different audience audiences yeah. in different contexts. I mean, he, I mean, one of the major phrases he'll say 
is uh, narrow is the path, don't waste any time. Mm. So, you know, that would go against like enjoy your donuts, really. But uh, yeah, so it's like if you want to be free, you know, get on with it. Um, so you can take phrases in certain contexts, and he's talking to different people at different mm. levels of consciousness. Um, if you want to transcend any area of your life because you're holding it tightly, then you have to make it meaningless. You have to transcend it. There are many tools for transcending. Work, work is one of those things which is often um, associated with survival and uh, also uh, money, survival, what other people think of you, the ranking situation that we have within the collective, like how much do you earn, what's your job title. Uh, so all of that stuff uh, is very strongly tied into the collective. So um, to transcend that, to not, you know, you'd have to transcend your, collect, your personal ideas around money and work, and you'd have to transcend the collective ideas around money and work. So if someone says, like, oh, I've got a better job than you, so ha-ha, then <laughs> so it's like, you know, that, if, that, if you've rendered your personal stuff and their personal stuff meaningless, that would have no effect on you being in the enlightened state. However, if you got hooked in, you know, uh, in your personal story or in their personal thing that they're bringing up from the collective, then, you know, you haven't tried, then you're going to be holding that tightly, aren't you? So in, to the extent that you're holding your personal beliefs and your body and other, and the collective personal beliefs and, and their stuff around money and work, to that extent, there's now intensity, it starts to become draining, you start to track time a lot, you can get exhausted, it can seem like an effort. Uh, and, there's no, and that's just a certain level of consciousness. So if you want to be at the enlightened state, there would be no tracking. You'd have transcended everything, the meaning of money, the meaning of work, the meaning of boss, the, every single thing that anyone could say. Because if you transcended your stuff, other people are going to come with their stuff. But you should have transcended that. Otherwise, the world will see if you're hookable. As soon as you're hookable, then uh, you hold the world tightly. If you're unhookable by anything anyone can say, any thought that can arise in your consciousness about any scenario, then you know you can be in in work but not of work, shall we say? You know you're you're a channel, you're a conduit of the infinite in there, but there's no personal you going into your own story or other people's stories to get to get hold it tightly as a, as a thing that should be tracked. That's very that's. Um, I come from a workaholic background in the stock market with this huge ranking situation, adrenaline, adrenaline field, and we all share this very tight collective, what's your job title, what bank do you go to, uh, what's your salary, what's, uh, you know, how many people are you in charge of. So there's, we all know this collective insane kind of like, and you, know, you, you pick it up psychically from the culture. So there's this ruthless uh, judging of each other. So. You know, uh, so uh, to transcend all of that is a fair amount of work, you know. So that's be holding it very tightly. The stock market was a very tight place, which was, um, which was actually quite life-threatening in this individual's case. Does that answer that one? Okay. If I